the home show this weekend. We'll be at the Roundhouse Saturday and Sunday. I'll be on with Mr. Gilstrap Saturday morning. I think we're going 10 to noon and then again 1 to 3 with uh, over 120 vendors on hand at the Roundhouse. And uh, hopefully the weather will cooperate. It'll stop raining enough that that won't be a mud pit. Uh, if you've ever been in where uh, trying to park around there, it can get a little dicey there, Bill. The forecast is for a, one, for a beautiful weekend. You should be okay. We're going to take it. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy. Good morning again, Rob. Maria Lawrenson. Good morning. Great to have you here. Good to be here. And for the listening audience, Maria spent the whole time adjusting all of our cameras, telling us how we should set up, how we should sit down, every Such chair needed to be redone. Such a lie, Bill. <laughs> well, Come there's on. an element of truth to that. Well, a colonel, yeah, a colonel. you elaborated quite a bit. <laughs> Just saying. I embellished somewhat. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> the only thing important to me is that David Anderson is the happiest person in Berkeley <laughs> County today. Maria is on, and I just had a Democrat on the program yeah, in the last segment yeah. in Glen Elliott. So, David, you're good. <laughs> this one's for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy finding Democrats in this state, so I had to, I had to work pretty hard there. Our guests in this segment from Shepherd University and the Stubblefield Institute, Ashley Horst. Ashley, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having us. I should turn up your microphone. Good morning to you. Good morning. And thank you for having us. And thank you for having us. <laughs> the whole line there. None of it was on microphone at all. Not a single word was on microphone. And Paul Teeter as well. Paul from Shepherd University is a junior. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, what are you studying there, Paul? Uh, business administration. Business administration. And what's your involvement with the Stubblefield Institute? Um, so I serve as the president of the Student Government Association, mm -hmm. and one of the initiatives we're doing is trying to incre increase political involvement and awareness, so we're partnering with the Stubble Field for some events. All right, and, and Ashley, uh, how many people are involved with you and the SGA in the Stubble Field Institute? So right now we have three students who are planning the event, and uh, the other two students, one of them is Chelsea Wells, who is the student representative from Shepherd University, who sits on the uh, board of advisors for the Stubblefield Institute. And the other is Eli Hall, who is the president of the Stubblefield Institute Civility Club, which is a student-led group who enjoy having um, civil discourse and so they will get together once a month and eat pizza and have interesting conversations and they just handed out campus civility awards which was really neat cool uh, how much interest is there in politics at the student level paul i'm trying to back remember back in my days and there was so much work to be done in terms of uh, making sure you passed your classes and if you had a job which i did trying to make some money to stay in college that politics seemed to take a, a, a back seat there yeah, to be honest, um, especially with our current political climate, um, a lot of students are disinterested, try to tune it out. So we're trying to- A lot of adults try to do that too. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we're working with, tr especially trying to get students interested in the local and state level stuff, since it seems to be the national things that they're just kind of fed up with. Billy? Yeah, uh, elaborate more about the getting involved uh, with ver uh, various forms or debates for our local legislators. This is something new, something that's not been done before, but this is being student-generated and then working with Ashley and others with the Institute, you kind of put some structure to it. Uh, but I think it's very commendable uh, of how you fo folks are reaching out to get to learn more about our local representatives. Will you speak to that, Paul? Yes. So um, our big event coming up is the Four Students by Students Town Hall. Um, we invited candidates for House of Delegates and State Senate from within the districts of Jefferson County. Um, and so we're hoping that'll allow the students to get more involved with that and more aware. Um, especially because you know that recently there's a lot of different legislation stuff involving um, education and college campuses so and like yeah as you mentioned you know this is hasn't something we've really done before is we're also hoping to you know build connections with those candidates and um, politicians when is that town hall um it is Thursday April 11th okay. um, we have different sessions but it starts at 5 30 and where will it be Paul uh, and the store ballroom of the student center at Shepherd Right. Where, where on the campus is the store ballroom? Uh, so it's on our east campus. Um, kind of trying to kind of picture the map now. But if you if you're on our east campus and you go down that main part of it, it's in our student center on the third floor. Very good. Right across from the Bird Center, which yes. is fairly well marked. Yep. So that's on Miller Maria. So talk a little bit about 
you know, what you hope to accomplish. My inclination is that um, still a good percentage of Shepherd students are from the immediate area. However, you're bringing in candidates who are also from the immediate area. So you would imagine that would generate some interest then. Um, so what are your hopes then for, um, w for students, for what they can learn in this particular town hall? Well, overall, um, I kind of want them to be more engaged and learn more about, especially the students who do live within those districts. Going to serve food. Food will get them engaged. Yeah, we'll have we'll have um, okay. refreshments at the beginning and throughout. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hungry now, Paul. Did you bring any yeah. food with you? Yeah, we're no. we're foodless today. <laughs> no, I didn't bring anything this morning. That's okay. But um. You know, I've had some students who ask me about it and they're like, I don't even know what district I'm in. So then I pull, because you can do it on the Secretary of State website, figure out, you know, if you're registered to vote and what district you're in. I'm like, oh, yeah, like I'm in that district. I'll come and listen to the candidates. Uh, we have about 10 candidates throughout all the districts. So we're hoping that they hear and they're able to be more aware because a lot of students, they don't know who the candidates are, what they're voting for. So we're also hoping to accomplish that. But in addition to the local candidates, uh, you folks are going to be talking with, interfacing with the gubernatorial candidates as well. And that's going to be after they appear on WRNR for the forum. Then they're coming over to have lunch with you. Ashley, that's correct? Correct. So later in the month, not involved in this event, yeah. we are hosting three out of the four gubernatorial candidates um, <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that, however, is a closed event just to students because we want our students particularly, and actually that event has been selling out very quickly, to have that time with the candidates to ask them questions. We also have several of our students who will be presenting their uh, senior capstone projects, the ones that are related to West Virginia, to the candidates. So that way, the candidates can see what really great work our students are doing. And um, that event, like I said, is closed for just students. However, the town hall event, the for students by students event on April 11th at 530 is open to the public. And uh, you can get more information about all of our events. but. Um, especially that event on our website, stubblefieldinstitute.org, and you can also register to attend that event through our website. I want to, before you move on to another subject, go back to the governor's candidates coming to your place, because I know we worked on that a little bit with communications of people to contact and such, and so the three who will be at ours will, will go to yours, and that's that's Miller, Mac, Warner, and Moore Capito. That is correct. Patrick Morrissey is skipping our forums. So that means he also won't be at your... We are assuming... Um, he does not. He does not commit to events particularly far in advance, and so we learned that as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so but I, I think it's great that those waiting. three are going to go to yours too. Yes. That's marvelous. I, and, I'm very psyched for that. Yes, and we greatly appreciate your partnership and, and help with making contacts with those candidates. You did all the work. All I did was pass a phone number along. <laughs> so good for you. Way to way to get them there. And I think that's great for you folks in school, Paul, that you get a chance to meet these governor candidates because when I was a student, I never met a guy or a woman or man running for governor. So uh, good for you. That's awesome. And in fact, when I was in school, I could tell you who the president was. I could probably tell you who the governor was. I had absolutely no idea who our local legislators were sure. or who the uh, uh, commissioners were, all that. So I what you're doing, Paul, I think is quite spectacular, and it's the first part of several processes. Uh, Ashley, would you, you just recently got a grant from, a, I know, Senator Manchin and perhaps Senator Manchin and Capito, I'm Correct. not really sure, that is going to promote a lot of the basics, what you're trying to do on Shepherd under the Institute, to other campuses in West Virginia? So that was a little bit of a different grant. So the grant that you're talking about, we just received from the Benedum Foundation, which is a foundation that focuses primarily on West Virginia and um, southwestern Pennsylvania. And last September, we launched a uh, community leadership and civil advocacy certificate, which not only equips our students with leadership skills, but it also teaches them to advocate for themselves with our community leaders, with our legislators within the state, local, and federal. And the Benedum grant will allow us to launch that statewide, which we're really excited about. We've been working, we have a network of about 
eight schools who are interested in having our certificate on their campus. And we've been putting together a network of community-based organizations to assist us with teaching those skills so that we're not creating the wheel and we're creating a network throughout the state of connecting young people to these organizations that are doing really great work within West Virginia. And the bottom line is civility. The bottom line is civility. It's teaching our students to interact with our legislators um, in a way that is civil and effective. Maria. Do you, is there another, there's an event not dealing with this, this week, next week? We have another event tonight. And okay, actually, tonight. Yeah, go, go, go. I'm going to kick that over to Paul because okay. Paul's also involved in that okay. event. He is great, moderating great. that event. I knew there was one this week. I wasn't yes. sure the date. Yeah, so, sorry, get, make, have my notes here so I make sure I give the right times and stuff. So tonight in the um, Bird Congressional mm -hmm. Center, we're hosting an event about resiliency in the Mountain State. Um, it's actually a collaboration between Stubblefield, um, the Environmental Defense Fund, and then Delta Sigma Pi, which is a co-ed professional business fraternity that I'm in. Um, you know, Resilient incorporates a lot of things, you know, the environment, the climate, access to health care, um, different economic factors. Uh, so we have a slate of panelists, all really knowledgeable and experienced in those different aspects. Um, we have Delegate Evan Hansen, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Groff from Shepherd University, um, Senior Analyst Lauren Johnson from the Environmental Defense Fund, and then Melissa Scott, she's the County Planner and Floodplain Manager of Hardy County. Um, that The be Delegate Hansen's from where? Oh, oh, I either it's either I should know this. It's either Morgantown or Charleston. I believe he's from the Charleston area. Okay, I'll look him up and get back to you okay. on that. Okay, fine. <laughs> and, and but what I is, saw Rob googling. Yeah, and what is his interest? What's his specialty? Uh, I know. I you might know this specifically. He works outside of his normal legislative duties. He works with um, a company or an organization that deals with these kinds of things. So he is uh, Mon County. District 79 and the uh, Minority Chair of Natural Resources, Energy and Manufacturing and the Minority Vice Chair of Political Subdivisions and Judiciary. Okay. Correct. And his, uh, his background is in responding to natural disasters and so, or sometimes even man-made disasters. And so, for example, when there was uh, one of the chemical spills outside of Charleston, he was one of the ones who responded to that to help clean up in a professional capacity. Um, I believe his background is as a scientist. Sure. I want to ask a couple of questions uh, to our student representative here on the program, Paul Teeter from Shepherd. We did a lot of interviews about campus carry when uh, that legislation was hot, being hotly discussed. Uh, your thoughts and any feedback you've gotten from fellow students or teachers in regards to campus carry, Paul? Um, so actually we're also having an event t tonight for students about that. Um, I know um, Holly Fry, she's our VP of Student Affairs, and all the other administrators are working hard to make sure that everything is implemented safely and correctly. Um, towards the beginning, you know, there was before it was passed, there was a lot of different debates and discussions on it. But right now, the focus seems to be, you know, this is going to be a law. There's nothing to change about it. We got to make sure that we implement everything correctly and continue to make sure that all of our students are safe. We are running ads from candidates running for governor who, as part of their uh, list of important issues they want to address, in West Virginia is making sure that girls don't play or boys don't play girls sports. Transgender issues and such are very big in Republican politics right now. Uh, my kids are 29 and 26. They don't give two seconds of thoughts toward these things, nor do any of the other kids in my neighborhood who are in their teens or 20s. Uh, your thoughts on this at Shepherd University and your fellow students from what you gather and what you think when you hear these issues becoming such big issues in Republican primary politics. Speaking on behalf of myself, um, and I guess from what I've heard from students, um, those issues aren't things that are really on our mind. You know, a lot of us think of the, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff that impacts us, especially, you know, the cost of education, I mean, making sure we're able to get a job and a, make a living wage. So um, if those candidates want to focus on that, that's their right. But it seems to be those issues aren't particularly ones that college students are heavily concerned about. Uh, you mentioned the cost of college, and the cost of college has outstripped the pace of inflation for the last 35 or 40 years. Uh, Shepherd is relatively affordable when you compare it to several other colleges around, the, almost most other colleges 
around the country, yet it's still a, a lot of money to go to college in a four-year commitment. What are ways that you handle it and your fellow students handle these higher costs? So I'm um, during my first two years, pretty much I didn't pay anything out of pocket. I applied, you know, and I qualified for the West Virginia Promise Scholarship, the West Virginia Grant, applied to a bunch of different local scholarships. Pretty much my first two years was covered through financial aid or scholarships. But it's definitely those kind of later two years where a lot of those scholarships go away because they're only for two years. Um, and I know other students are doing the same things. Um, a lot of students also, you know, take a few jobs. I work two jobs on campus. Um, but even though Shepherd, I will admit, is probably the most affordable college in the state, you know, there's always ways, especially as you mentioned, you know, the cost of college is outpacing inflation. So I feel like the legislature and, you know, the different state politicians could definitely do stuff to help make that more affordable for students. Bill? Yeah, I'm, I was listening so to you, I, I was not framing another question, so you caught me off guard. Sorry, Maria. I'll, I'll recover. I'll recover. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go. I never go get this opportunity. <laughs> so when are you running for office, Paul? You're oh. very articulate. Um, you've got a lot. Uh, you, you certainly know how to answer questions. Have you given that any thought? Honestly, no. Um, I'm actually, well, it's funny, right now um, is our elections for the Student Government Association, and I'm running for president again for that. Um, but right now, I don't really have any interest in running for office. Um, right now, I'm kind of focusing with my degree on marketing and public relations, but I, I thank you. That, that was really nice. Um, but Are you are you from the area originally or I'm from, somewhere else? I'm from Romney, West Virginia, so it's about Romney. an hour and a half away Love from Romney. Here. <laughs> Your thoughts on the railroad in Romney. We, okay. <laughs> just a little, little joke there from yesterday's uh, interviews we had. Uh, go ahead. Did you yeah, formulate your question now, Bill? Yeah, re yeah. thank you. It took me a while, but I have one. Uh, recently, had, uh, this, the Institute had uh, Beta O'Rourke. Did you attend that <coughs> discussion? Yeah, I attended um, his event in the morning for students, and then as well as, ha as well as his event in the evening for the community. What did you come away with it from his discussion? Um... I think it was a really great opportunity, you know, for the students to hear from someone who ran for president. I think he ran in 2020 and ran for other offices. Um, and from me and the other students who are there, it was nice because, you know, it's not often we get huge big shots like that coming to our campus. So that's another way we're building the engagement. And even though, at least in the student discussion, it wasn't necessarily stuff that was super partisan, you know, with stuff that could apply to everybody. Um, I think the students from all different political ideologies um, enjoyed hearing from him. What, what can the Institute do looking ahead that, that the students would associate with or would improve the, uh, the students uh, uh, being on campus? I think just continuing these opportunities. I think the Stubblefield Institute's done really great with all their different events so far. Um, so it's just, you know, work in progress, you know, getting more and more students to come to these events. Um, definitely, like I said, the Better Our Work event had a really good turnout, and we're hoping to have good turnouts at our town hall for the state legislator candidates and the luncheon with governor candidates. Yeah, from a, a personal incident, uh, a year or so ago, I was asked to give some remarks to the student leadership of the, uh, the Stubblefield Institute. Um, it was a Saturday afternoon, a beautiful day. Uh, I was really impressed the number of students there and how engaged they were. So if that's an example of yes. the impact that Ashley and, and you and others are having on the students, uh, I'm, I'm quite encouraged. For one thing, everything is done under the umbrella of being polite, being courteous, listen to the other guy. We're not going to try to convince you that I'm right, you're wrong. We just want to listen to the thought, but it has, it should be done, and it is being done under the, uh, under the umbrella of civility. So, so we're of a certain age here, um, and uh, you know, you hear just generally, you know, young people don't care. They're not engaged. They don't want to be involved. They get discouraged or they're just attached to social media of some part. Do you feel like um, there is really active engagement? It certainly sounds that way at Shepherd. What percentage, um, I'm always about percentages, <laughs> would you say of the student body is really connected 
um, wants to be engaged either with the political process, with politics in general? Any idea? I couldn't really think of a percentage. I will say, though, it's definitely right now it feels like majority of students are kind of, you know, disinterested in that stuff. But it's definitely I mean, it's been growing, especially with the different stubble field events um, to kind of talk about what you mentioned earlier, Bill. Um, I can't remember the student's name off the top of my head, but um, it was the discussion Stubbleville had about the campus carry bill this school year. And we had, you know, community members, we had elected officials, and one student had was at like a round table with Senator Trump. And even though the student and Senator Trump disagreed pretty much on everything with the um, gun bill issue, you know, they were able to discuss their points and be able to, you know, just talk about it in a polite way. And that student came out of it just being so shocked and surprised. And I know that student has come to a lot of other um, different events. So it's really having them just that first action of coming to an event and just seeing all those opportunities. What it can be. Yeah, and certainly be. Senator Trump is a yeah. person who yeah. is very gracious and, and would appear that way. A good so. person to discuss issues yeah. with. We're Absolutely. just about out of time. Can you promote the event on the 11th one more time, Ashley? Absolutely. So the event on the 11th is the For Students by Students Town Hall. That is April 11th at 530 in the Store Ballroom on the campus at Shepherd University. And you can register for that event by going online to stubblefieldinstitute.org and all of the information will be right there. And don't forget the event tonight. Yes, yes the event that starts at 4.30. 4.30, and where is the event tonight again? Uh, in the Bird Congressional Center. Very good. Paul, good to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This was fun. <laughs> Come back and do it again. Right. Uh -huh. Ashley, thank you. Thank you for thank having you. me.